this video we're going to discuss the Hardy-Weinberg principle and this is uh, option D number four um, and the Hardy-Weinberg principle is primarily used in order to determine if a population is changing and the idea behind the Hardy-Weinberg principle um, was established and was basically created in order to measure frequency changes or how often different allele types are occurring in a population. And so by looking to see if the allele frequencies in a population are changing, you can see if that population is changing as a whole and thus determine whether um, th that species, species, that population is changing over time. Now there's a couple of different assumptions that are um, included in the Hardy-Weiberg principle. Um, and, and those include no mutations, uh, random mating, uh, no natural selection, an extremely large population size, and no gene flow. Now, if these five things do occur, so if there's no mutations, there are there is random mating, there's no natural selection, there's just large population size, and there's no gene flow, then if those five conditions are met, then that means that the population is not changing. Generally, and for the most part, we see at least one of those um, assumptions occurring. Uh, mutations do happen. There is some selection in mating, uh, sexual selection for example. Uh, populations are not always large. There's definitely natural selection. And so because of that, um, because those, those five assumptions are not met usually in populations, um, most populations are changing you know, given environmental changes or whatnot uh, that cause the, the population to change. And so by looking at Hardy-Weinberg and by measuring the frequencies of different alleles in a population for traits um, and, and basing it off of these five assumptions, we can see if a population one is changing and if so, how much or, or how it is changing in terms of the allele frequency. So to do this and, and to look at how this equation is derived, uh, we want to look at um, the different combinations of alleles in a population. And if we're looking at a gene that has just two alleles um, for that particular trait, um, if that trait has two alleles, uh, there's three different possible genotypes. The first could be if we have two dominant alleles, we call that homozygous dominant. If we have one, uh, one dominant, one recessive, we call that heterozygous. And if we have two homozygous recessive, um, homozygous recef recessive is going to be if we have two um, recessive alleles. And so the frequencies of each allele can be re represented by letters P and Q. And we're going to use these in order to um, calculate the frequencies. Now for both of these alleles, uh, the total uh, per percent or the total frequency within the population is going to be equal to one or 100%. Um, so we're going to be, uh, both of those, both P and Q, um, both the alleles dominant and recessive are going to equal uh, 1 or 100%. And so let's take a look at what that, that means then. If we have um, homozygous dominant plus the heterozygous form, whether it's this condition or this condition, as well as the homozygous recessive, all of those added up are going to equal to 1. So then if we have P plus Q, which is the allele frequencies for the dominant and the recessive, if that equals one, then we can say, or we could also say that the dominant allele squared plus two times dominant allele times recessive allele plus the recessive allele squared, that is also gonna be equal one. And so with this, we can assume that P is the frequency of the dominant allele in the population and Q is the frequency of the recessive allele in the population. And therefore, P squared is the percentage of homozygous dominant individuals. Two, uh, excuse me, P Q squared is the percentage of homozygous recessive individuals in the population. And 2PQ is the percent of heterozygous individuals within the population. And so we can use this information in order to calculate the allele frequencies for a population. And we can look at this over a number of generations to see if the allele frequencies are changing. And so let's do a practice problem because you're going to need to be able to solve practice problems. Um, we'll do a practice problem together. So here we go. If a sample population has a percentage of homozygous recessive genotype, uh, two lowercase a's, if that's 36%, and we use capital A to represent the dominant allele, we want to calculate the following. First, the frequency of the recessive allele, uh, also the frequency of the dominant allele, and then the frequency of the genotypes homozygous dominant and heterozygous, and the frequency of phenotype for the dominant allele. Um, so let's break this down into our first part. Uh, I've left the question here, um, and I've given you the equation again. P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared equals 1. 
So what I'd like you to do is to try to calculate the frequency of the A uh, recessive allele and then the dominant allele. Go ahead and pause the video, take a few minutes, and in your note packet, write down this question problem um, or on a separate piece of paper, and then try to calculate both of these. Uh, pause it, and then when you've got it, or if you, you've, you've given it a good shot, um, go ahead and play the video again, and we'll continue going through this. So hopefully you've had a chance to work both of these out. Let's go ahead and take a look at this first one, the frequency of the recessive allele. AA, or homozygous recessive, is going to be 36% of the population uh, that's given to us in the problem. So that means that Q squared equals 0 0.36, which means Q, if we take the square root of Q squared, means that Q is going to be 0 0.6. So the frequency of the recessive allele in this population is 0 0.6. Now, we already discussed and we shared that P plus Q equals 1. So if we sub in, our, um, if we sub in uh, the, the information that we have for the Q, for the recessive allele, and sub it into our equation, we find that P plus 0 0.6 equals 1, which is a pretty uh, quick, easy calculation to determine that the dominant allele is going to be 0 0.4. That's the frequency um, uh, of how often that allele is occurring within the population. So we've calculated both our dominant and recessive alleles, uh, the frequencies of those in the population. And now the second portion of this is calculating the genotype frequencies of homozygous dominant and heterozygous and the frequency um, for the phenotype of the dominant trait. Uh, so I'm going to, again, ask you to pause the video and go ahead and work out these two portions and uh, give it a good shot, see if you can get these, given the information that we just calculated right here, 0 0.6 for the recessive allele and 0 0.4 for the dominant allele, and we'll come back in a minute and work through this last portion. So the frequencies of the homozygous dominant, um, we have two capital A's. Um, and so if we take the information uh, that we calculated for the frequency of the dominant allele and we multiply that by itself, because two A's, 0 0.4 equals A, so if we multiply that by itself, we get 0 0.616, excuse me, or 16% for the homozygous dominant. Now, if we want to figure out the heterozygous, we take our 2PQ, so 2 times P is going to be 0 0.6. Um, P is referring to the recessive allele, which we calculated here. And we're going to multiply that by 0 0.4 for the Q. That's going to equal 0 0.48 or 48%. And so then to calculate the overall frequency of the A phenotype, that's obviously going to be the homozygous dominant and the heterozygous forms that we see in the population. So to calculate how often that's occurring, we need to add together the homozygous dominant and the heterozygous uh, genotype frequencies. And if we do so, we get an overall percent of 64. And so that's occurring. 64% of the population is showing that dominant trait, uh, excuse me, dominant allele of the trait. Um, on my website, uh, mrropebiology.com, I've linked a number of other uh, practice problems, uh, sites that have some practice problems if you want some more practice with Hardy Weinberg. Again, the key thing to remember is that by calculating the allele frequencies, which we've done here, and the genotype and phenotype frequencies, we can measure and we can see if a population is changing, and if so, by how much. And the five principles, um, keeping those in mind, um, in order to determine whether a population is, is changing in terms of its allele frequencies. If those five conditions aren't met, then it indicates that the population is changing in one form or another.